be a tiebreaker. It was the Lakers who got the official conference championship for a second year in a row. They were division champs last year when we were split into two divisions. Uh, the Lakers, on the other hand, they were picked to finish in the middle of the pack. And they've been the surprise team in this conference. Jimmy Link, of course, is the head coach uh, of this team who was the coach of the year in the Peach Belt as a result of what this team did. A 14-game winning streak as we speak. Uh, it's a surprise, but I think that this team coming into this game against that team in some way, even though they're on their home court, I think Clayton State's a little bit of an underdog. I would agree with you, actually. And look, 14 straight wins is amazing. If they get 15, they deserve that conference title from this tournament. They've already, as you mentioned, won the regular season one, but I think everybody kind of looks at it and says, okay, this is the third one, this is the third go-round, this is the decider. This is a team, if you have not watched much Clayton State basketball, that totally changed the way they did things, personnel-wise and attitude-wise. And that came back when they took out Denzel Council, permanently suspended him. That was the last loss. It was the last game 14, he played. 14 games ago. Yes, at Pembroke. And things have changed a lot since then. Nate Powell has come out. He has become a leader. And we've also seen the emergence of Jalen Taylor, who's been playing great all year, and a team that can really score from all quarters. But on the other side of things, UNC Pembroke, as you said, everybody expected them to be here, and rightfully so. They have a heck of a team. I mean, if you go through and you look at guys like Nigel Grant, Brandon Watts, let's put in Akia Pruitt into the mix, who's the defensive player of the and year. And the MVP in last year's conference tournament. You're right. And you know what? There's a guy I really like who's come on strong, and that's Tyrell Kirk, a freshman who didn't do much in the first meeting between these mm -hmm. two, which was a win at Pembroke. Well, he has come on. He had a big game against Clayton State here before, and a big win, or big game, I should say, in their last game yesterday against Francis Marion. Those are guys where they can really, if one of them has an off night, they can step up. You know, the thing is with this game, Mitch, we are going to see who shoots a three-pointer better. Pembroke, and they like to go outside. If they can really shoot a lot of threes, Clayton State's in trouble. There's no question about that. If Clayton State can keep the three-pointers down, and they can stay out of foul trouble, too. They need to keep their big men on the floor. I know they have gone to a smaller four-guard set at times. A lot of that is because out of necess necessity. But Nate Powell has stepped up and done so. But if Jalen Taylor can give significant minutes, maybe get close to it, about a 9-9, nine and nine, I think, that first game. So if he can get close to a double-double, that would be great. Carl Owens is playing well for the Lakers, too. Those guys need to contribute. We'll see. A guy like Kyle Kinsey came out of nowhere yesterday yep. and really helped the Lakers come back for a win. Both these teams finished with identical 19-3 conference records in the regular season. As we said, Clayton State gained the title via tiebreaker. Uh, these two teams split the regular season meetings. Bill talking about the, the first meeting, which really changed things after that for the Lakers. They fell 85-65 on January 20th up in Pembroke. Let's not forget the Lakers led by three at the half. They were shooting the the lights out of the gym and then a complete role reversal in the second half they went 10 of 40 from the floor one of 12 from downtown and uh, ended up losing that game by 20 came back here and on february 17th they were 83 73 winners uh, which put them in position to win the conference if they held serve which is what exactly what they did uh, i don't know if it factors into this game or not but it does bear mentioning the Lakers are 21 and 7 all time versus UNCP, and they are also 11 and 1 against them here at the lock. Just something to, to chew on as far as history is concerned. We'll see whether that, that matters or not. I'm sure it doesn't matter to any of the 10 players at a time that are going to be running up and down on this court. The Lakers have the home court advantage. Uh, the Braves have a solid contingent of fans who travel down from Pembroke. You hear their band playing right now. It's a great college basketball atmosphere here on a Sunday afternoon. We'll see if that plays a role in this for them. At any rate, uh, it should be a good one. Uh, these two teams have kind of been pointing at each other over the course of the second half of the season. And uh, we've got the matchup, the one and the two, that certainly we expected and uh, that we had hoped for. You got a key for me, Bill? Keys for both teams? Key is stay out of foul trouble for Clayton State and hit your free throws. Those are two things that have actually added up a bit in the last few games. And another thing is they can't have, they can't afford against a team like Pembroke that's this good. They can't afford a bad half. They've had that in a few games yeah. lately. 
they Start have a bad slow. half, yeah, I mean, or a bad second half, whatever it is, yeah, they're done. For Pembroke, they need to just know that they can come on the road and win. They know that. They have a heck of a record. They have played so well over the course of the last 40 games. But they need to know that they also have to have a few guys step up against this Clayton State team because Nigel Grant played well in both of those games, a win and a loss. The wild card is a guy like Kirk, the freshman. It's a guy like Watts. It's a guy like Kinsey. How much point can they get around from those guys? And also, how does Pruitt play? Pruitt had a big game in the win. He had a quiet game in the loss. Does he get in foul trouble? And does he score more? I believe it was eight points in the last time that these two teams mm -hmm. met. Can he score more than that? That's uh, going to be a big factor, I think, as well for the Braves. One other thing to look for to see early, as Bill pointed out, getting off to a good start has been an issue the last several games for the Lakers. But again, there's pedigree involved. UNC Pembroke was here in this situation last year, and they were winners. This is the first go around for Clayton State in this type of situation. Yeah, they played in the quarterfinals and the semifinals. This is a different animal against the defending champ, even though you're on your home court. We'll see how each team reacts at the start of this game and whether or not there were some jitters for Clayton State, as I think we saw a little bit from them yesterday uh, well, in they, the semifinals. They, they, missed, they missed air balls yes, from the free throw line. No question. Yeah. i got some foul, foul, numbers, foul line numbers for you that we'll touch on when we get to it in the game. At any rate, starting lineups, opening tip right around the corner. We'll be right back with Clayton State versus UNC Pembroke. You're watching the Peach Belt Conference Championship game on peachbeltconference.com. Thank you. 
One final time for this season, Theo Celeste with the starting lineup for both the UNC Pembroke Braves and the Clayton State Lakers. For the defending champion Braves, it will be number zero, Brandon Watts. Number two is David Strother. Akia Pruitt, number four. Nigel Grant is five. And number 10, Tyrell Clerk. For the Lakers, number one, Nathan Powell. Two is Justin Tuxen. Number 12, Aubrey McRae. 14, Jalen Taylor. And 22 is Ja'Carl Owens. Our game officials, Archibald Whaley. I know that's uh, Bill Schindler's favorite ref. Well, Bruce Benedict, but then Archibald Whaley. Yeah, it, it, just just under Bruce Benedict. Yes. Just a tad. And then Scott <laughs> Smith and Michael Colon. Akia Pruitt, Jalen Taylor to jump, and we will be underway in this championship game of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament. Everybody's a little jacked up, and I'm sure these players are as well, and maybe a little bit of butterflies floating around too. But we're ready to get going. Hope you enjoy it. And the ball is controlled by the Lakers, and Aubrey McCray off the tap. Lakers in the home whites and in the road black with gold trim. UNCP right to Jalen Taylor and immediately a foul on Akia Pruitt. I'm just going to go out on a limb on this one. I really think Jalen Taylor is going to have a big game today. He had a really miserable game, especially for him the last time out. That was because of foul trouble. He played eight minutes in the first half, had two fouls, had to sit till halftime, came out. That second half started. He got two fouls immediately and didn't return to the game. So he, he really just played oh, about nine minutes yesterday. I think he's got fresh legs. I think he's got something to prove. I yeah, saw I'm his with you eyes. On that. Yeah, I, something to prove for it. Oh, his eyes coming out of that game. I, I, that he he was on fire, and uh, nobody to blame but himself. And I think he's going to have a big game. Well, quite the opposite of what happened yesterday, and in the last three games, the Lakers are only shooting 61 percent from the line, and on the season, you're talking 72 percent at the top of the Peach Bell Conference. So the Lakers jump out on top. Two zip on two free throws from Jalen Taylor. Now the Braves are with it. Brandon Watts up top right side. Get it down to Nigel Grant. Faces on to Carl Owens. Spins. Puts it up. And then it's Watts who got the basketball down low. I can't believe there was no three seconds call. And then stepping out of bounds was David Strother. You know, you make a really good point about the free throws, Mitch, and that first loss, the loss in Pembroke, 85-65, Clayton State lost to the Braves. They only had 9 of 15 shooting from the line. They were 60% in that game. The win here at home, the 83-73 win, they went to the line 24 of 30. They got a lot more opportunities at the line, but that's 80%. So that's a big swing when you go up 20 percentage points. Plus, they had double that with uh, when they had 15 free throws to 30. Nate Powell's got it up top. He's going to shoot. And offline there for Nate, the rebound to Strother, who's bringing it up along the right wing. Here's Pruitt going right at Taylor and putting it right in. So tit for tat, if you will. And Pruitt on the court last time he faced the Lakers, was only eight points and five rebounds. That's a pretty off game for him. So if they get him started, that is good news for the Braves. 2-2, and then Nate Powell throws it away as uh, Aubrey McCray was cutting to the basket. So miscommunication early, opening 20 seconds here at the lock. Peach Belt Conference Tournament Championship game, the Clayton State Lakers, the UNC Pembroke Braves. Here's Watts swinging it left side to Kirk. Get it down low, spinning, turning, and hitting is Pruitt again. Last year's tournament MVP. We talk about the defense, the defensive player of the year in the Peach Belt this year, but he can, uh, he can score points as well. 
Arby McRae gets stripped by Watson. They're coming the other way. They got numbers two on one. And Kirk avoids the strip and misses, but they're going to call a foul on the Lakers. So follow up in your Pruitt point. He can't score. He had 14 points in the win they had. And that was a game with 14 points and six rebounds back on January the 20th. Well, the foul goes on Aubrey McCray. They'll inbound underneath their own basket. Nigel Grant swings it to Kirk. They get it down low to Pruitt. Came up short. He got it back and another whistle down low. Basket won't count. Lakers had an opportunity to swipe the glass, but they couldn't control it. Quick and foul on Jalen, yeah. And there is on Jalen Taylor. And that's not what we want to see in the early going here because they're going to continue to pound it down low into Pruitt and uh, into Grant. Well, that's been the game plan. You can tell they are going after Jalen Taylor. Actually, he's backed off a little bit. You can tell he's playing maybe just a little bit more uh, gingerly, not as aggressive as he'd like to against Pruitt because of those fouls on the back of his head. Pruitt comes up short, but uh, it's Akia Pruitt 5 and Jalen Taylor 2 right now here in the uh, championship game. And there's JT down low going right at Pruitt and got it rejected right back at him. So Pruitt, the leading shot blocker in the conference, put it right back in Taylor's face. And here's Grant down low, and he got the bounce. So Nigel Grant on the board, and it's 7-2, a 7-0 run for the Braves. McCray for three. Won't go. Rebound to the Braves. Tyrell Kirk gets it to Watts cross court right side. There's Pruitt. Defended by Taylor, backing down, spinning with the hook, couldn't bank it in, the rebound to Ja'Carl Owens, and he'll bring it up. And we're going to have to see Ja'Carl Owens be a factor down low right there like that, but it wouldn't go. Taylor got the rebound, goes back up, and the ball deflected out of his hands and out of bounds. So, Bill, they're doing a good job defending in the paint and really not allowing uh, J.O. or J.T. to have a clear look at the basket. Yeah, they are really, de you're right, they're denying on the baseline, and the only way that Clayton State's going to open that up is to start hitting some three-pointers. That was something they did early on in the season. They've kind of gone away from it primarily because the defenses have switched, so there's a lot more denial on the outside. Uh, but the last time they won, they had five three-pointers. They did lose that game on the road. Uh, with eight three-pointers. But if they can get a few, it doesn't have to be many. It's just enough to loosen up the defense. By the way, they've added uh, eight seconds to the uh, game clock. It was at 16.49. It's now at 16.57. Nate Powell looking to inbound, looking for help, and gets it into Taylor high up, gets it down low to Powell, and they're going to call an offensive foul. And that's two on Jalen Taylor. Wow. Exactly what you didn't want to see happen, but and you can see the disappointment written all over his face right now. Second straight game for Jalen Taylor in early foul trouble. And I tell you what, it, it's, it's a difficult task to go yeah. up against both Pruitt and Nigel Grant down low. It is. And, you know, the, he's a guy, look, Jalen Taylor is a first-team all-conference player. That is a big loss for the second game in a row for the Lakers. Kinsey came in for him. Here's Watts, and that's going to be a travel on the senior from Wesley Chapel, North Carolina, averaging 12 and a half points per game. And has started now all 31 games on the season for the Braves. Kyle Kinsey with it. Watts defending him. Of course, Kinsey had the big game yesterday. Lit the fire under the Lakers in their comeback against USC Aiken. Kinsey here at the elbow. Benjamin's got it up top. Screen from Owens. Stops and shoots. Came up short. And another rebound for the Braves. Watts down low to Grant. Gets it back. They're playing catch. Nigel turns and banks it home. And Jimmy Link is going to have to get a timeout. And he does. So uh, right now it's the Akia Pruitt and Nigel Grant show for the Braves. 
They trailed quickly 2-0 on two Jalen Taylor free throws, and they've run off nine points in a row. Yeah, you just mentioned it there. They do not, the Lakers do not have a, a field goal made in this game. And about, we're, what, we're two seconds away for four minutes. Yeah. So that is something, it's a, it's a well-called timeout by Jimmy Link, the Peach Belt Conference Coach of the Year. But... They've got to hit, hit some shots. They are getting some looks outside. The game plan, though, is inside. Deny on the baseline. Don't give any uh, clear shots. And Pembroke is executing that to perfection so far. The one mistake they've made was the foul by Akia Pruitt on the first look with Jalen Taylor. After that, they've been perfect. Yeah, and look, that's just something that is uh, – uh, tough defense, you're going to make a foul in there, and it, it, it did get them to the line. It did get them two points. Other than that, they've played perfectly. And uh, Pembroke on the offensive end, they are getting down low. They're taking advantage of Jalen Taylor who's on the bench. They've got guys who can just mash it down low. We talked about the height advantage. I don't think there's anybody in the conference that can match up height-wise against UNC Pembroke. We talked in the uh, broadcast Yesterday, if you didn't hear that one, we said they're, they're good on the hoof. They get off the bus, they look they look like a tough team, and it's because they are. They've got some height. Uh, the problem for Pembroke, ironically, has been when they play against a team that will go a little bit smaller and maybe play four guards, they've had trouble. Clayton yep. State beat them, and so did Francis Marion. Both of those teams featured four-guard looks. That's something that could factor in here today, but if Clayton State's not making shots, then just forget it. Yeah, well, that wasn't a factor yesterday for Francis Marion, that's for sure. Nate Powell into the paint, tried to force it down low to Owens and a kickball, so uh, the Lakers retained possession. Shot clock goes to 20, so they gained a second there. And the Lakers 0 of 5 from the floor to start things off. Meanwhile, uh, the Braves are 4 of 8. And 6 of their 9 points in the paint. Kyle Kinsey gets it out to Justin Tuxen, looking for a screen from Owens. He does get it, but... Still nothing for the Lakers and cut it off down low as uh, Murray boils with the interception. Watts from downtown and he nails it. And this thing is getting out of control early for the Lakers who now are down 10, 12 to two. And there's a foul. Finally, a little bit of a late whistle, but they got it in. So that'll be the first on Micah Kinsey. Well, there's got to be something that has to spark the Lakers. We talked about this with the coaching staff, and they know it. They're, I think Jimmy Link even said it in the interview yesterday. Uh, they can't afford to have a bad half. And this is, you know, the first well, five right minutes. Right now they had a bad five minutes. Yeah, I mean, don't let it become a bad half if you want to stay in the game. Well, good defense by the Braves without question as they are making everything difficult for Clayton State right now. Napal's well, got it left side, backing down into the paint. Hook shot is good. Nate, little guy amongst the trees, no problem. That's what he likes to do. He's really good when they drop him down to the four. First bucket in this game for the Lakers. It took him five minutes. They get the rebound. It's Kinsey. Remember, though, this is a team the last two of their three games that has trailed by significant margins and come back with big runs. And there's a travel on Kinsey off the pass from Benjamin. So the referees are playing a little bit close to the cuff, I think, as well, Bill. Oh, there was a quick whistle. Talked about those big runs. It was a 12-point second-half deficit. The Lakers went on a huge run to come back in that game. That was yesterday against USC Aiken. Up top here, right side, Strother. And there's a foul on Akia Pruitt. That's going to be a second. Well, that could be a kind of an equalizer because now he's going to go to the bench for what we think would be most of the Second half, and you know the run is uh, they had a what 24 to six stretch yesterday to come back and win by three over USC Aiken. So don't sleep on the Lakers. Although, like we said, this is not USC Aiken. This is Pembroke, and they're good. They're really good. Nate Powell up top, looking for help. He's got Benjamin. Plenty of time, 13 to shoot, and Tez will shoot a three in and out. And they're going to get J.O. over the top. So right now, when you talk about two of the better rebounding teams in the conference, uh, UNC Pembroke with a plus six, uh, plus, actually almost seven in rebounding, and the Lakers with almost a, a plus five. But right now, UNC Pembroke, who averages 42 and a half rebounds per game, they are controlling the glass. 
Micah Kinsey throws it down low to Murray Boyles. Nate Powell guarding him. Driving to the basket, Kinsey stops at the foul line, shoots off the mark, and Nate Powell is able to gather it and bring it up on the run. Here's Kinsey, right side. Puts it on the floor. And McCray from downtown, and he cans it. Big hoop there early, and it, I will tell you what, an equalizer to be if Aubrey McCray can get off a little bit. 12-7, Braves on top of the Lakers. They get it down low to Pruitt, and he's fouled. Excuse me, that's Murray Boyles, and he was fouled by Napal. McCray in the January 20th meeting, that was the loss, the 85-65 loss for Clayton State in the win for the uh, Braves, but he had three three-pointers. It actually was three of four in that game. So Murray Boyles to the line, 77% on the season. Makes the first, averages 12 and a half points per game. And substitutions now as uh, Pruitt does come out with the two fouls. Brandon Watts as well uh, in for the Braves now is uh, the freshman guard from Florence, South Carolina, Jamal Bryant. And uh, also Tyrell Kirk has returned. Lakers trail 14-7 on the two free throws. About seven minutes into this first half. McCray again from downtown, and again he hits. And that's exactly what I was talking about, Bill. Having issues getting it down low, got to work outside. And that'll open things up. 14-10, Lakers down now by four, trailed by as many as 10. Double team Grant, three ball from Bryant, and it hits the top of the glass, so that'll be Lakers basketball. You got Pruitt on the bench. You can start hitting outside. And, you know, another facet with this Lakers squad this year has been, really, they have had so many people. And there's another quick foul on Kinsey. It'll be a second. But they've had so many players step up, Mitch, that, you know, the, maybe the star, the guy we highlighted, we said, like, well, we, we thought maybe this would be a Jalen Taylor game, something to prove. He gets in foul trouble again. Guys come in and they play well, and that is what has kept them on this winning streak. Yeah, well, that was Kinsey yesterday. And another foul, and this one again on Micah Kinsey. So that's three on the sophomore from Brookwood High School right here in Atlanta. Sports management major Micah Kinsey, so he'll have to go to the bench and David Strother back in. Not, you're not losing anything by putting your starter back in, the freshman from Lumberton, North Carolina. And Ben Miller is... Mm. And then there's a foul on Murray Boyles as he was preventing Nate Powell from trying to get to the basketball on the inbound. So all of a sudden, that was three, three or four whistles in the span of about 30 seconds. There was a lot of foul issues in the last game these two teams played here, actually, for oh. Pembroke. And the denial on the defense there, and they were, I don't know why he had to force it to Nate, look for somebody else, but there wasn't much movement there from the Lakers. So they throw it away, down 14-10. Lakers turned the ball over. <laughs> they turned it over plenty against this team. In fact, they had about the same number of turnovers in the win and the loss. They had 16 in the loss, 15 in the win. Nigel Grant gets it outside to Bryant. Here's Grant's going to face up on Owens and shoot and hit. Here's your guy from the Bronx. Nigel Grant with six. And the Lakers trail the Braves by six. Here's McCray who has hit two threes. Benjamin flashing into the paint, puts it up with the left hand and draws a foul. And that one's going to be on Grant. Check that. Two on James Murray Boyle. So he's got a quick two. And we've got a stoppage in play. Just over nine minutes uh, into this first half. And UNC Pembroke on top of the Lakers by the score of 16 to 10. Well, I think the timeout by Jimmy Link, when there was a run going on, they had not made a field goal for the Lakers. And coach of the Lakers took that timeout, settled everyone down. And since then, we've seen a team come out a little bit more composed. Also seen some three-pointers hit 
from. Yeah, that helped. Yeah, I mean, the, well, those two. Well, that, let me tell you, that, that'll open great. things up. I mean, right now you got two things working in your favor if you're Clayton State. Number one, Akia Pruitt's not in the game. Yes. He is their best defender, and I'm not taking anything away from Nigel Grant, who is an imposing force out there. But he's more of an offensive force, not the defensive present, the shot blocking presence, the way Akia Pruitt well, is. He's the player, of the defensive player of the year. Correct. So you take him out of the mix right now, and I would have to say for probably a good another good five or six minutes at the least. And the Lakers have hit some shots from outside. Now with Pruitt out, you can attack the middle a little bit and see if you can draw some more fouls. And we'll see if Jakar Owens will maybe come up a little bit big and. Uh, you know, they, they do like to slip Nate Powell, as we talked about, down low. But uh, the foul trouble, too, has started to add up a bit for UNC Pembroke. So I think those threes and then the fouls have been the turning point. Yeah, the Lakers started 0 for 5. They're now 3 of 9, so they've hit three of their last four shots. And uh, the Braves started out 4 of 8. They're now 6 of 13. But uh, points off turnover is 8-0 for Pembroke. And the Lakers have turned it over already six times. And the miss there by the usually reliable Benneman, who's a 78% free throw shooter. Yeah, the Laker free throw shooting has been suspect the last, oh, three, I'd say three, three or four, four games. games. Exactly. Yeah, they're 54 of 88 in the last three games, 61%. So Murray boils, and that's going to be his third foul on the charge. So in a span of about a minute and a half, Micah Kinsey picked up two fouls and now three on Murray Boyles. And that means Pruitt's going to come back in now, Bill. Well, oh, I, I should tell you, too, Kinsey's got three personals. I mean, he picked up two in a row, but he's got three overall. Pruitt's yeah, got two. Yeah, Pruitt's got two. Kinsey's got three. Now Murray Boyles yeah. got two. So, you know, and, and if you get a third on Pruitt here, watch out. Oh. And they threw it away again. I, I, he had a clear path to the basket yeah. and for whatever reason went back outside with a, with a no-look pass. But, you know, I mean, the thing that doesn't concern me as much is if you look at the win and if you look at the loss, the Lakers turned it over about the equal number of times, which is kind of crazy to say. They didn't play well in both of those games turnover-wise. A lot of that oh, is Oh, good steal defense. by McCray, and then the foul is going to go on Grant, uh, not Grant, excuse me, on uh, Bryant. So, good defense by Arby McCray, who's done a solid job thus far. I mean, he's the guy that got the Lakers back into this thing with a back-to-back -a -back triples from him. Well, Lakers, I mean, we talk about how good the Pembroke defense is, and rightfully so. I mean, they, I think, are, for my money, they're the best in the conference for sure. Lakers would be very close second. This is a team that does play good defense. Well, McCray with a couple of free throws and actually the front end of a one-on-one, -on -one, and he misses it. McCray only an 86% foul shooter, so uh, you're not going to win if you can't hit free throws against this team. That's nerves. We saw it yesterday. And to throw it away, they tried to set up Pruitt down low. Owens is going to bring it up, gets it to Powell. Three for Kinsey off the mark, and the Lakers come away with the offensive rebound. McCray from downtown. Hello again for Aubrey McCray. He's got nine points all on threes, and the Lakers pull within two, 16-14. A rocky first five minutes for the Lakers. They righted the ship. The last five have been very good. Brandon Watts has it up top on the dribble into the paint, and he bowls over Nate Powell, and that's an offensive foul. So that's the first on Watts, but I'm telling you, right now with nine fouls on uh, UNCP, actually 10. I've got to say, nine of them have come within the last three minutes, Bill. They had 21 personal fouls on this court the last time these two teams played. That was a big part of the story of the Lakers' win. We're kind of heading in that direction again. Kinsey with the dribble, goes through a screen from Owens, right to the basket, the floater, no, fought for, Benneman saves it on the baseline. And he gets it out to Napal, and now a whistle from one of our officials. Stoppage in play. I don't know if there's a sh uh, maybe clock a cl issue. Uh, did the cl shot clock reset maybe when it shouldn't have? Well, it, I don't think it hit the rim. Yeah, it did not hit the rim, and we had a shot clock reset. It was about 16 seconds. Yeah, it never hit the rim. It hit the glass, obviously, on the missed layup attempt. Yeah, so they'll reset it to 16. 
All right, Lakers still with the basketball. Kinsey directing traffic. Gets it to McCray. Here's Benneman open and partially blocked. Great defense by Watts. And a whistle and a foul on the Lakers. Uh, stepped out. Is that what it was? Okay, better than a foul. That's what I was talking about, though, about Brandon Watts but before we came on the air. He's so long, so athletic. I mean, he, you know, he's a forward in the guard's body. Here's Pruitt up and under, and the foul on Kinsey as he contested Pruitt. Well, well, I think, you know, we know what the officiating is going to be like today. They know they're going to call it tight. I think it's been fair. It's been tight on both teams, and that's what it's just going to be. And uh, now you kind of have to adjust. And I think for Pembroke, the one thing I see from them, which is concerning, and it's just how it goes sometimes, and I know it's something that gets in players' heads, but they have seemed a little bit rattled by some of these calls. And you just have to kind of put it back and put it in the back of your mind and say, okay, that's how it's going to be. Yeah, well, I think that they got on that run as uh, Pruitt makes one of two and the ball goes out of bounds as it was Watts who tried to get it. But I sense that with their run at the beginning of the game that they really kind of felt like they were just going to blow Clayton State out. And I think they, they've lost their way a little bit. Yep. With, with some stupid foul. Yeah, and basketball is such a game of runs. Here's Nate Powell working on Grant. Kinsey, pump fake on the three. Christoph Nairn in the game. Oh, nice setup for Powell, and he got rejected. He got it back, puts it up, and a foul. And it counts. So Nate again, the little guy inside, and Nate Powell with that strength of his. He's got a wide body. And he's able to create some space. And as we've talked about, Nate is a really good rebounder. And that's not just something that's happened this season for his career. He averages just under five rebounds a game, uh, averaging six this season. They had 22 points and nine rebounds the last time they met in the win. And Nate's free throw gets the roll, gives him five, and that ties things up at 17 apiece. And on the 15-game winning streak, Nate Powell is averaging something on the lines of like 21 points a game. 17-17, 9-20 left in this first half. Akia Pruitt backing down on Nate Powell. Does it again, spins, and good defense by Nate. And, and uh, Akia Pruitt a little bit frustrated. He was looking for the foul, and he didn't get the whistle. Owens from downtown. But the rebound, nicely done by Nairn, just came flashing through the paint to grab it. So the Lakers reset. Kinsey to Nate Powell, Pruitt on him, goes to the basket, shoots, doesn't get the roll, and then the putback doesn't go by Owens, and it's controlled by Watts. Tough break for the Lakers there. So we stay tied at 17, and there's Watts, they're gonna say a hand check foul, and that's gonna go on Christoph Nairn. Naren is a guy who really kind of started off a little slow. Then he had that injury. He's wearing a, guard, a, a brace on his right shoulder. And Watts misses on the front end, so the Lakers get the rebound. But Look for the lead. Oh, and there it is, Owens! Nice setup from Nate for the jam. And the Lakers are back out on top. They led it 2 0, and now it's 19 17. And Akia Pruitt's out on the court, but he is not contesting those shots. Yes, exactly. And, that, and that's wise, obviously. You're still a presence out there defensively. Grant driving the baseline. Good defense by J.O. And then there's another foul. That one's going to be on Grant as he knocked over Nate Powell. And, and in a, a little bit of a way, Bill, tell me if you concur. I think they've gotten into the heads of the Braves a little bit by standing up to them. I think so, too. I, look, it, it, it kind of goes from your bench on down. Ben Miller has been in the ears of the officials and the players see it and they get frustrated and then the players energy I mean that's the whole thing you just kind of have to stay calm in these situations like I said what cost them the game the last time these two teams played is the Lakers got to align a lot there were a lot of fouls called and it's being officiated the same way that it was officiated here in that Laker win and so 
You know, I think the officials have been consistent. They've called it close on both sides. Hasn't been anything really I've disagreed with. Well, Nate makes one of two. Lakers got to get better at the line, but they're up by three. It's 20 to 17, Clayton State. Under eight minutes now left in this first half. Yeah, worth repeating, they were 60% from the line on the loss, 80% in the win. And there is a miss on a jump shot by Tyrell Kirk, and then the rebound was fought for, and the foul is going to be on the Lakers, and that will be uh, the second on Christoph Nairn. Actually, Aubrey McRae. Is that right? Okay. So instead of 21, it was 12. Would have probably preferred to see that one on 21 as opposed to 12. But that's the situation, and uh, Justin Tuxen will replace Aubrey McRae in the lineup for the Lakers once... Uh, we come back, 7.49 left in this first half. Clayton State, who trailed it by 10, right now leading it by three, 20 to 17. Well, if you think about it, they only had two points for the first five minutes of this game. They didn't have a field goal. And boy, how things have changed. It, it has been a lot of the foul issues for Pembroke. They have got two players with three fouls in Micah Kinsey and James Murray Boyles. Also, he's played significant minutes. Akia Pruitt had to sit on the bench for a while, but because of those three fouls, he's back out there with two personals, but he's been playing really tentatively. They've kind of taken the teeth out of what he can do yeah. defensively and hasn't contested as many shots as he probably would. Moment of levity here, Bill Schindler. Oh. We break out the uh, fresh from Hawaii macadamia nuts, Kona coffee dark chocolate. That uh, has been a mainstay here for this 14-game winning streak by the Lakers as one Bill Schindler was uh, kind enough to bring them back from Maui. Oh, well, I'll take one. Aloha. Aloha, my brother. <laughs> Shaka Ono. So Nigel Grant at the foul line. And Grant on the season from the stripe, 71%. Averages 16 points per game. Nigel Grant has had two good games against the Lakers this season. And hits the first. So I just want to get this straight. You are totally giving credit to the Macadamia Nuts for the win streak. Many things. There have oh. been many things, foremost of which, of course, has been the play of the Clayton State Lakers. But you but always got to support things. Okay. No, that's fine with me. I just I just was clarifying. So Grant hits both. <laughs> and that trims the Braves deficit down to one. 20 to 19. Lakers on top. You've got Nairn, Benneman, Kinsey, Owens, and Tuxin. And a nice high floater there by Kinsey. And the Lakers are back up by three. First points for him. Here's Grant. Double team in him on the look. Hop skip into the paint. Bryant for three. And controlled by Powell. And Nate will bring it up. Nate going right on Watts. Foul line jumper. He got fouled by Watts. You know what I'll tell you? I see that a lot in these games that we've been calling, Bill in the NBA, other college basketball games, how many times do you see a shooter go up on a jump shot and then the defender is too close to him and when the shooter comes down, there is impact and then the whistle? It's, that seems to be more often than ever. Yeah, and I mean, well, it's, it's played that way. Nate Powell specializes in it. I mean, the thing is, he's 6'1", but the guy can bench press about 350 pounds. He can go inside, he can play physical with you, he's going to ball fake you and get you in the air, and as soon as you're in the air, he's going to get into your body. Lakers up 23-19, 7.08 left on the clock here in the first half. Powell's second free throw is good. So the Lakers all of a sudden with their biggest lead, it's 5, 24-19. They were down 12-2. So it's been a 22-7 a run. Watts in the paint, they're going to say no on the floor. And a foul on Christoph Nairn. So there's that second on Nairn. So that'll send Watts back to the line. 68% on the season. Just a solid, solid player. The senior guard from Wesley Chapel averaging 12.5 points per game. Six rebounds. 
He's hit 42 three-pointers. He's got 41 blocks. Gives you 33 and a half minutes a game. He's played every game, started every game. Oh, I mean, he's a great, he's, he is a great swing man. But the, the thing is, they've got Tyrell Kirk, too, who's the freshman version, really, Correct. of Brandon Watts. It's, uh, that's the, they've got another one on the pipeline. 24-21, Clayton State on top of UNC Pembroke. Championship game of the Peach Bell Conference Tournament. Ja'Carl Owens, jump shot over Grant, and it's rebounded by Strother. Watts along the side, let's go from downtown, and the rebound to Kinsey. So that was a quick shot there by the Braves. Kinsey pushing it right to the lane, his floater, no. And then the ball out of bounds, and it, it will be Braves basketball. Kinsey didn't go for it, he thought the Lakers hit it off. Yeah, and that's... Excuse me, he thought the Braves hit it out of bounds. Yeah, Kyle was tentative with it. And, I mean, that's one of those things where he just... I don't think he just saw it, and he's shaking his head going on back. He would have... Had he known, he would have gone for it, but I think it might have hit maybe Nate Powell. David Strother hands to Tyrell Kirk. Worked the weave here with Brandon Watts. Now it's Strother. Going to go right to the bucket and got deflected out of bounds. Nice defense by Justin Tuxen. Tuxen yesterday had a very good game, too. He had a 10-point game. Yeah. It was a quiet 10. Well, another guy, too, we talked about McRae, who's now on the bench, but he's the leading scorer for the Lakers with nine at the moment. But Tuxen could light it up from three, too. Inbounds to Grant. Going to work on Owens. Gets it in the corner. Pump fake, back down low to Grant, spins, gets Owens up in the air, banks it in, and draws the foul. So Nigel Grant going to work, doing his thing, the senior from the Bronx, and draws the second foul on Ja'Carl Owens. You can kind of see that one coming. Well, here's your guy from the Bronx, you know. It's, he's. Did you see the tattoo? Did you see the Nigel Grant tattoo? He's got the Statue of Liberty on his arm. I love it. Home. <laughs> so the Lakers and Braves tied at 24 apiece. 545 left in this first half. Peach Bell Conference Championship game. Here's Tuxen for three. Yes! Well, I'll tell you what, Bill. That's a good sign to have Tuxen and McCray with their eagle eye from three-point range. Lakers up 27-24. We talked about the threes being an important factor in this game. If Pembroke was going to hit them, the Lakers are going to be in trouble. They have not hit threes. They've gone inside. And Watts got blocked on his foray to the basket, and it's Powell who comes away with it. Nairn from downtown. Yes! Oh, you're getting Kristoff Nairn into the show now, are you? Nairn scored a combined 25 points against North Georgia and Young Harris back in January. And those were his two best games of the year. Nigel Grant responds from the right side, though. And he's having a big first half. It's 30-26, to 26, Lakers. Well, nothing new. In the win, he had 21 points, five rebounds. And uh, I'm sorry, that was in the loss. In the first game, the win, 28 points and 10 rebounds. Here's Tuxen right side, now between the circles. At the screen from Owens, stops and shoots and hits. So the Lakers are shooting it all of a sudden. And they lead by six. And that could have been a travel, and that's exactly what it was. Wave off the basket. As it was a good move to the basket, but with an extra step there. It was either going to be a foul or a travel. <laughs> A little, bit, uh, little and, bit out of control. And that was Javion Hicks who's in for the first time. And now Nigel Grant goes to the bench to get a breather. Akia Pruitt back in now for the Braves. They trail by six. Kinsey going to go right at Pruitt, and he got rejected. Yeah, that, that's not a good idea. <laughs> I mean, that's well, why I the mean, guy's... Player of the, but he's you're a testing player him, you're trying to get yeah. the third foul on him, so it's worth the well, shot. Well, it is, I know, but I mean, that's just what I'm saying is that's why he's the defensive yeah. player of the year. We get it out to Kinsey. Down low, it's Nate Powell. Someone's lost their shoe. It's actually Strother. Powell floats, and then he comes over the top, and that's going to be two on Nate. 
You know, I don't know who Strother was covering, but maybe they should have tried and got it to him. At any rate, we got a timeout on the floor. Even four minutes left in the first half of this Peach Belt Tournament Championship game, and the Clayton State Lakers leading the UNC Pembroke Braves 32-26. to You're watching Peach Belt Conference Tournament action on peachbeltconference.com. Mitch Evans, Bill Schindler back with you here at the Athletic Center on the campus of Clayton State University, Morrow, Georgia. Peach Belt Conference Tournament Championship game between the top seed, Clayton State, and the number two seed, and also the conference defending champion, UNC Pembroke, who right now trails the Lakers 32-27 after that free throw by Javion Hicks. Can I just point out something, and, and I think probably there's going to be a lot of Pembroke fans watching this and saying, boy, Pembroke's really gotten the short stick when it comes to fouls. No, they haven't. Let's just look at personal fouls. 13 for the Pembroke Braves, 11 for the Lakers, and they've actually had, Pembroke's have more time on the line. Uh, Tuxen shoots an air ball there. That was a little bit of a heat check for him. So it goes out of bounds, 32-28. Lakers on top by four with 3.45 remaining in this first half. They've had 14 from the line, Mitch, for Pembroke, just 10 for the Lakers. Just want to point that out. It's pretty even. It's been well officiated. Get it down low to Pruitt, and they've got Moses Williams now in the game. Playing catch with Strother. His three-pointer is short, but uh, the rebound, Strother is able to track it down. So they'll reset. 3.15 left in the half, and it's been good. Braves led by as many as 10. The Lakers have led by as many as six. Here's Pruitt backing on Williams, comes up short, goes over the top, no foul call, and then they get, I believe, uh, Christoph Nair now with his third. So Nair now still out on the court and again you know this, this isn't like it's uh Benjamin or Tuxin or McCray with three fouls no but still is with all the fouls that are being called I mean like I said it look I think it's a, a well officiated game it's just they're calling it close this is a, a player they need the Lakers to give them some time and that's what Christoph right. Naren is doing well, he's also give, chipped and, in a bit and, he hit that give, three and give some fouls too yeah that's okay Pruitt hit one of two makes it 32 29 as we go under three minutes remaining in this first half. Kinsey, oh, and he bowls over Nigel Grant as he lost his footing. Slipped on the floor, maybe got a little bit out of control and trying to find some space to get to the basket. Yeah, so that was... For Kinsey, that's his second. I think that was more, uh, you know, obviously is a foul, but I think that was a slip going in there. I'm not sure what he... If, he, if it's not, I'm not sure what he's trying to do. Oh, and they call a body foul there on Moses Williams. So just as you said, you know, uh, you're getting some time out on the floor right now from Christoph Nairn. Uh, obviously the same situation right now for Moses Williams as you've got Ja'Carl Owens and Jalen Taylor both on the bench for you. You know, one thing we talked about, I think this was off air, but uh, early in the, we were getting ready for this game. Moses Williams is out there for more than 10 minutes. That's not a good thing 
for the Lakers. That's not a knock on Moses Williams. It just means that they've had a lot of the bigs, Jalen Taylor, Ja'Carl Owens, on the bench for the Lakers. And Watts goes one of two from the line, makes it 32 to 30. Lakers on top. Two and a half left on the clock in this first half. Nairn going to drive to the basket, got stripped. Moses Williams, no foul over the top on Watts. And the ball going to the Braves. In the corner here, it's Bryant. And they'll set it up top now with Strother. That was actually a really nice block by Watts. Moses Williams defending high. They get it down low now. Grant up top, it's Watts. Puts it on the floor. Spins, fades away, short. And the rebound fought for, and it'll go out of bounds and to the Lakers. And Nigel Grant went down hard trying to save that basketball, but he's up. He's okay. So right now the Lakers with a lineup of Kinsey, Nairn, Benneman, Tuxen, and Williams. So not the five you're used to seeing out there. No, and still with a two-point lead. Benneman almost had the step on Watts, but didn't take it. Pulls it back. Grant covering him, and he gives it off to Nairn. Tucks in from downtown, off the mark, and it's tracked down by Strother. So the Lakers have gone cold here in the final couple of minutes of this first half. Oh, Grant's going to uncork from downtown and hit it. Jimmy Lee probably doesn't want to have to play some of his guys here who are in foul trouble to get to the half, but he might have to. Yeah, clearly. 33-32 now as the Braves have responded. They were down by six, so this is a 9-0 run for them. Oh, Williams almost traveled and then almost had it taken away from him. And he goes up on Grant, can't get it to go, gets his own rebound, and puts it home. Big bucket by Moses Williams. Give him credit for hanging in there. Yeah, the freshman's come a long way. They'll tell you in practice, he scores. They say he can really score it. And Lakers uh, back up by one with 48 seconds left. Strother's got it up top between the circles. Down low to Grant, and that's going to be a block on Moses Williams, and the basket will count. They haven't counted it yet, so we'll wait and see. I thought they gave the end one. Nope, two shots, so it doesn't count. So wave off the basket, or now they're discussing it. Well, it would either be one or the other, right? If they're going to give them two shots, they wouldn't count the basket. If they count the basket, it's one shot. Now they're having a discussion with it at the table. Now they'll count the and basket. they're going to count the basket. So Grant has gotten on fire here late in this first half. We figured that, though. I mean, Grant has had two big games against the Lakers. He's going to get his. It's the other guys you've got to prevent from getting there. Exactly. You kind of say, well, you take, oh, missed it. And you take Grant out of the equation, though, because you know he's just going to be good. 35-34, Braves on top, 30 seconds left. There's about a seven-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Kinsey, oh, that was an acting job by Nigel Grant. He went down before Kinsey even made contact. So that's three on Kinsey. And that was a, a whistle before there was even any contact. So Kinsey with three and an opportunity here, last shot with the clock off now. 24 seconds remaining in this first half. Yeah, I'm looking at that, his feet were moving. That was a bad call, top of the screen. Just saw that again and he, he was, he was leaning back, that was, uh, I don't think probably that, that's the one call that I'd say they, if there was any of them, I think most of them have been very accurate. Like I said, they've called it tight. I think for the most part they've called it right. That one, though, not so much. All right, for the Braves here, a chance to go into the locker room with a lead. Will it be one point? Will it be three, four? What will it be? Seven seconds left in the first half. Grant turns and shoots on Williams. No good, out of bounds. And it will stay with the Braves. So 1.7 seconds left. 
Strother will throw in underneath his own bucket. And here comes, oh, nice play by Williams as they tried to set up the alley-oop for Brandon Watts, and uh, Williams was having none of it. So the opening 20 minutes are in the books, and this has been a very good one as expected. And at the half, it is UNC Pembroke leading Clayton State by the score of 35-34 to 34 in the Peach Bell Conference Championship game. And you're watching the Peach Bell Conference Tournament on peachbellconference.com. We will be back with our halftime report in just a couple of minutes.
Thanks for coming back. Halftime here at Clayton State University, the Peach Bell Conference Championship game between the Lakers and the UNC Pembroke Braves. And uh, it is the Braves who lead it 35 to 34. Mitch Evans and Bill Schindler with you to uh, discuss and get you ready for the second half. Look at the shooting figures for UNC Pembroke. They got off fast, but uh, tailed off 10 of 28 for 36%. They are two of six from downtown for 33%. The Lakers got off to a bad start. They righted things for the most part, 33% on 11 of 33 from the floor, but the big number, five of 11 from downtown, 45%. And uh, right smack dab in the middle of all that was uh, Aubrey McCray. Three of four for nine points from uh, three-point range. And then also Justin Tuxin hit uh, one for the Lakers. And uh, Nate Powell with 8.6 rebounds leading the way for the Braves, Bill, is Nigel Grant, 18 points on 7 of 10 shooting. Nigel Grant has been outstanding in the first two matchups, and he might have even upped his game in this third matchup. He is really looking good. You want to start maybe recounting player of the year ballots? I'd say he would be <laughs> on a few of those. Um, He's definitely going to be, let's put it this way, he is definitely going to be in this uh, Peach Belt Conference uh, tournament all team. All team. Yeah, no and if, the, if, if Bremberg wins, yeah. he's going to be the MVP. I think that's fairly safe to say. My, my halftime out on a limb prediction. Uh, that's you not love the, making predictions. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, just if they come true, maybe a, a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then. But, um, I, you know, it's funny, as we, we talked about this game, I think there's perception and then you get the stat sheets, and that always kind of conflicts mm -hmm. at times. Uh, we talked about all the fouls. There have been a lot of fouls. I think well, my math is rusty, but it's 29 personal fouls combined for the two teams, 13 for Pembroke. Actually, more called on the Lakers, 16 personal fouls. Pembroke's gone a to the line. A lot of those came late. They did, and, and Pembroke's gone to the line more, 13 of 19. They haven't been good from the line. They're only 68%. Lakers are 7 of 10 at 70 percent i think that's kind of been an interesting story in this game because it has affected the way the, the minutes have been distributed it's also affect, affected the way that these two teams play each other they like to play physical you got the 24th ranked team in pembroke who's very good defensively and the same can be said about the 25th ranked team in the country in clayton state and so you know we haven't seen anybody break double figures except for nigel grant a few guys sitting on the precipice actually nate powell Maybe could have a big second half. I think, you know, you want another prediction? That's who needs to step up for the Lakers. He's on the pre he's Look, he's looking at another double-double. He's got eight points and six rebounds. Uh, he has had, I thought, a pretty good game so far, and he's four or five from the line. But uh, points in the paint, surprisingly, yeah, the way. A dead even after a, after a fast start for UNC Pembroke. Yeah, and it's only ten. Yeah. I mean, the way they started, they got, ten, what, ten. six of those? I think they got six of their ten in the first five Immediate, minutes. Immediately. Yeah, exactly. it was Akia Pruitt and Nigel Grant right away. And uh, the points off turnovers have been a big deal. Although, um, Clay State's turned over ten times. We talked about it. And, and, and ironically, they had about the same number of turnovers in the win and the mm -hmm. loss. So, look, it's a good defensive team. The Lakers will turn it over. But uh, nine turnovers, I should say, for UNC Pembroke as well. Hey, it's even. I think both teams went to the locker room feeling good about that first half. Yeah, I agree with you. Why not? I mean, it, it, it's down to 20 minutes. You're pretty much dead even here. Uh, we had three ties, five lead changes. Longest, uh, biggest lead, largest lead for the Braves was 10. For the Lakers, it was six. UNC Pembroke led for 10 minutes and 12 seconds of the first half. Clayton State for seven minutes and 51 seconds. Game was tied for a minute and 57. So that is the number situation, the story from the first half. Now we get ready for what's really going to matter here in the second half to determine who will be the champion of the Peach Belt Conference between Clayton State and UNC Pembroke. Lakers sending out Arby McRae, Justin Tuxin, Ja'Carl Owens, Jalen Taylor, and Nate Powell. you got Akia Pruitt out there, as well as Nigel Grant, Tyrell Kirk, David Strother, and Brandon Watts for the Braves. And it is UNCP's ball to start this second half. Lot and it's Pruitt on the right side. A lot on the line for both of these teams. Down low, Pruitt spins in the lane. Now back outside to Watts, drives the baseline, and he gets rejected partially by Taylor. Lakers on the run. McCray left side, and he's going to shoot in Grant's face and come up short, and the rebound by Kirk. So quick shot there by McCray instead of getting something set up. 
Mentioned those things on the line. 14 game win streak for the Lakers. Pembroke has won 35 of their last 41. And there's Grant again and another jumper from the elbow. So Nigel Grant is going to do what Nigel Grant does. Pencil him in for 20 or more. Oh, well, he's got 20 now. I so, know. Uh, you know what? Don't let him get 30. You're going to be in trouble if you're the Lakers, I think, if that's the case. Unless you completely shut everybody else out. Taylor spins with the hook, and it goes in and out. And then coming to get his own rebound was Jalen. If he can stay clean of foul trouble and put some significant minutes in, that would be great for the Lakers. Napal flashes into the lane. Taylor with the spin and then almost threw it away. McCray got the deflection. Down low to Owens, and then the Lakers do give it away. Here's Brandon Watts. Got to be smarter with the basketball if you're Clayton State. So they've given away two possessions here. One with a quick shot and one with a turnover. And here's Grant again. Fading away on Owens and misses. The rebound, Tuxin. Powell going to go to the basket and lay it in and through its face. Nate Powell now with 10. Lakers down 37-36. Here's Grant backing on Owens, and he gets it to go. He muscled that one in. I don't think there's any. I mean, really, I don't know how they're going to stop him. Grant has done what he wants to do in this game. And they get it down low to Taylor, and nice play by, was that Kirk? Yeah, it was yeah. Kirk to steal it, but when he came down, he stepped on the end line. Nigel Kirk has been I missing. Check that. As they, they, uh, they whistle a foul there? No, stepped on the line. Kirk came down on the line. Okay. Kirk has been missing in action. He's only taken three shots. He's missed all three. Powell looking and is able to throw it into Owens. And now Jacarl wants some help. Gets it from McCray. Back to Owens, puts it on the floor, crossover on Grant, and went to the bucket and laid it in. We've so he abused Nigel Grant there. We've said every time that there is a heart of a guard in every forward. 39-38, <laughs> Braves on top. Kirk gets it back to Grant, working on Owens. Backing down on him, spins in the lane, the up and under, he misses, and then the rebound to Owens, and he flips it to Tuxin. Oh, Justin goes crossover. His floater won't go, and it's taken in by Watts. They lose it. Powell's got it on the loose ball. McCray wide open from downtown. No, back tap by Taylor, and he gets it to Powell, and they'll set it up. They've actually out-rebounded at halftime. Oh, got through the screen there and nails the jumper around Owens. And the Lakers are back out on top, 40-39. to The Lakers actually out-rebounded UNC Pembroke yep. at halftime, 24-21, which is a lot to say when they consider the size advantage. And considering the advantage they had early on the glass, they owned every rebound. Strother going to the bucket. Gives it off to Grant on the baseline, and his layup is good. Nigel Grant now with 24. And it's 41-40, Braves. He's got 24 of their 41. Wow. McCray again from three-point range, in and out. Watts got the rebound. He brings it up along the left side. Working on McCray. Got the screen from Pruitt, and then a kick ball on defense by McCray. So it will uh, be Pembroke's ball in 20 seconds to shoot. And now Benneman's going to check in for McCray to give him a blow. And going to the bench for the Braves is Strother. And in is Micah Kinsey with his three personals. Oh, they get it to Murray Boyles. They're going to say no offensive foul. Murray Boyles just got in. He picked up his fourth foul. So this has been a game to forget for the junior forward from Columbia, South Carolina, James Murray Boyles. Averages 12 and a half points per game, five rebounds, has been in big time foul trouble and has just two free throws. Yeah, I, I think we said this in the last broadcast of these two teams made. I mean, hey, it's Oscar night tonight. I'm yeah. telling you, he's got the Oscar name. Murray, excuse me, Powell goes to the back at basket and is able to bank it in. So Nate with six here in the second half. He's got 14 on the game, and the Lakers are back up by one. Murray Boyle spins and banks. He heard what I was saying about him. And now the Braves are back out on top, 
Benneman comes, gets it from Powell. Tez screen from Taylor. Now it's Owens. 10 seconds on the shot clock for Clayton State. Benneman looking. Here's Taylor. Turns and shoots, came up short, and then it get it got deflected out to Tuxin, and he throws it to Powell. So the Lakers with a fresh 30. I'll tell you what, Taylor looks so tentative right now, Bill. Well, I, I mean, I would. He's got it here on Pruitt. Up and under, and he got it. Yeah. Got to get going. Wasn't tentative there. No, but I mean, look, he, he had those two fouls in eight minutes yesterday and then two fouls right away in the second half and didn't play another minute. So, you know, he's a little gun shy from that. 44-43, UNC Pembroke trailing Clayton State. Braves with the basketball. Pruitt, no whistle there. Three from Murray Boyles, and it's tracked down by Kinsey. Micah Kinsey, that is. No relation to Kyle. We've discussed that previously when these two teams have played. The up and under by Murray Boyles won't go, but the foul will be on Ja'Carl Owens, and that's now three on J.O. And there's a timeout on the floor. A little over five minutes into the second half. Clayton State with the one-point lead, 44-43 over UNC Pembroke. You're watching the Peach Belt Conference Tournament on peachbeltconference.com. Mitch Evans, Bill Schindler back with you from Clayton State University's Athletic Center. Second half of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament Championship game. And the home team, the Lakers, right now with a one-point lead. It's been going back and forth for both teams. By the way, the Peach Belt Conference is on Twitter. Stay connected to any and all of your favorite conference sports teams on social media. Also get up-to-date scores and stats by visiting peachbellconference.com what's what's your twitter handle so that's a good lead into a shameless plug mitch <laughs> what's my yeah. twitter handle uh, at the mitch sports okay meantime james murray boils misses on his first free throw attempt yours is simply at bill schindler yeah right? i claimed it early on i didn't even have to go the real the then it's to fight anybody huh yeah no numbers necessary no no numbers Murray Boyles misses both. Nate Powell with the rebound for Clayton State as they'll look to add to their one-point lead right now. Benjamin's got it between the circles. Good defense by Watts. Powell going to go right to the hoop. The scoop, no. The rebound to Kinsey on the run to Watts in the corner. Three from Murray Boyles. Short. Tail of the board. Powell doesn't have numbers, though. And he'll pull it back. That's a smart move. And here's J.O. on the right block. Turns on Murray Boyles. Left-handed hook, no. And the rebound of Murray Boyles. I'd like to see maybe the Lakers go outside a little bit more again. All right to it was Kinsey, and he stepped. Actually, he traveled. So the Lakers get it back on the turnover by the Braves. Murray Boyles goes to the bench right now. So does Tyrell Kirk. You got David Strother back in there. And also uh, number 35, Javion Hicks, the sophomore from Cary, North Carolina, who had two free throws in the first half. Oh, here's Tuxton from downtown. Nope. And then they're going to call over the top on Owens. 
and they're actually saying he grabbed him by the waist. So that is four on Owens. So you got Owens with four, and you've got Taylor with two right now. So it was Taylor who was in the big foul trouble early, but now all of a sudden, Ja'Carl Owens finds himself with four. So the Lakers will go small with four guards. Aubrey McCray checks in. And it's still 44-43, Lakers. Seven minutes into this second half. Kinsey with the dribble. Looking for help. Ooh. Gets it to Pruitt up top. Ten to shoot. Going to take it to the hole. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Pruitt. So that's number three on him as he steamrolled Jalen Taylor. Yeah, that was a big call. You knew when the whistle blew and there was contact between those two, which way was it going to go? Holding your third. breath. Well, it's the third on either. Yeah. Well, no, that was right. Third on either. Right. Would have been three on Jalen Taylor. And, and, and that's a swing. You are correct, sir. Dantes Beneman. Kinsey checking him. Screen from Powell. Excuse me, Beneman goes right up and is fouled. And so that's Hicks who picks up his first. And Beneman will go to the line. Dantes on the afternoon, just one point. And misses on that one. Missed the free throw earlier. Missed the consistency, though, in averaging just over nine points per game during this 14-game winning streak, and he averaged over eight points before that. And he had a big, big part in that win over Francis Marion uh, yesterday. Or I should, I'm sorry, I should say the, the win for the Lakers yesterday. He had, what, 19 points? Yes, he was the high scorer. Benjamin misses both free throws, and then the ball goes out of bounds off the Lakers at the other end. So a reset of the shot clock for uh, Pembroke. USC Aiken. Yes. Kinsey looking. There's Watts. McCray on him. And that's a block on Aubrey, and that's going to be three on him now. Tried to draw the offensive. So that's three on the Lakers here in the second half. Both teams with three personals. In half number two, 12 22 remaining in the second half. 44 43. It's kind of stayed this way for the last couple of minutes after we're going back and forth. Switching the lead, trading off. Here's Nigel Grant. Dumps it off back to Kinsey, who will pull it back out. Hands to Watts. Goes into the lane and the rebound by Taylor, and they got stripped, and that's going to be a foul on Watts. And that's going to be three on him. Brandon Watts is a great player. But what might even be better is his facial expression. Yeah. Were, well, Nigel Grant's yeah. got some good facial expressions, that, too, That's now. true. That's true, too. But whenever the whistle goes on Watts, yeah, and Grant's right there, too. It is, it is fun to watch the reaction. Either way. And the switch. Grant now on Benjamin. Powell's got it. Threw it on him at the foul line. McCray goes through the screen. Now sets up Powell. They're going to call another foul on Watts on the hand check, and that's four on him. That is a gigantic foul on the senior who really is, I want to tell you, he's Mr. Everything for this team. He's going to have to go to the bench, and they're bringing in Jamal Bryant, a freshman from Florence, South Carolina. Uh, total difference in the persona of those two basketball players. 11.44 remaining in this second half, and we remain with a 44-43 score in favor of Clayton State. You're watching the Peach Belt Conference Tournament on peachbeltconference.com.
Both teams out on the court, ready to resume play here at the lock. Dantes Benham to throw in for Clayton State. Looking, looking, he's got Taylor. And here's Powell up top, working on Akia Pruitt. And then the ball deflected. Benjamin stolen by Kinsey. And he was able to keep it in bounds, and he gets it to Pruitt for the jam. Well, Akia that'll... Pruitt's first bucket of the second half, and it's 45-44 UNCP. They, the Lakers totally blew that possession. Yeah, they'll, that'll change the statistic a little bit, but will it surprise me to tell you that now they are equal in points in the paint? The Lakers actually had more points in the paint before that slam. 18-18 to 18 now, both teams points in the paint. Powell backing in and turns and shoots and doesn't get the roll. He gets his own offensive rebound, and it goes. No whistle, though. Nate with 16. He's got eight in the first half and eight in the second. 46-45, Clayton State. Here's Pruitt. They work it around. Akia Pruitt gets it again on the block, and the foul on Powell as Pruitt took the uh, hook shot. So that's three on Nate now. And that will send Pruitt to the free throw line uh, here this afternoon. Akia Pruitt, three of six from the stripe and on the season, a 60 percenter. And the first one bounces and rolls off. Akia Pruitt, the defensive player of the year in the Peach Belt and the reigning MVP from last year's Peach Belt Conference Tournament. And the second one rolls off as well, so missed opportunity there for the Braves. And the Lakers could add to their lead right now. It's up one with 10 and a half left. Pump fake, and Tuxton goes under Pruitt to hit. His first basket of this second half, Lakers ahead 48-45. Maybe a minute or two old now, but just looking at... And Nigel Grant loses it on the baseline. Turn it over to the Lakers. Looking at shooting percentages, though. This has not been a great shooting game for either nope. side. Uh, Lakers were at 34% on our last stoppage and 36% for the Braves. And a lazy inbounds pass, and Kinsey again picked it off, and there's Pruitt to lay it in. So the Lakers with uh, trouble in their backcourt. Both teams have about a dozen turnovers apiece. And then a timeout there on the pressure as uh, Aubrey McCray was forced to call the T.O. But Akia Pruitt with back-to-back -back baskets there, able to pull the Braves within one with an even 10 minutes left. So we're halfway through this second half. We're three-quarters of the way through the ball game, and we're still basically at one point, Bill, and each team has been trading the lead of one point. Did you expect anything different? No, I did not. Uh, I mean, okay, look, I know it was uh, the scores. I mean, this is interesting. It was an 85-65. That was a 20-point game in Pembroke on January the 20th. Different team for the Lakers. Again, that was the last time they lost. They've won 14 in a row mm -hmm. since then. Here at home, it was an 83-73 win, so it was a 10-point win. So you say, what, the difference in those games, there's 30 points. I mean, the, you say, but those are not close games. You know what, that game here was a close game. That was a close game for a 10-point game. Kind of got a little funky the, at the end. The first game was a close game for the first 20 minutes. It was well, a yeah, three-point yeah, game at halftime. Lakers actually led. Right. So, I, look, th these teams have measured each other pretty well. I expected this kind of the, to play out. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, maybe not one point at the 10 minute right. mark, but we thought it was going to be pretty even. And so far, boy, it has. It wasn't even at the beginning when it was 12-2 in favor of UNC Pembroke. And it looked like the Lakers might be on the ropes early, but they were able to respond. And it's been a close game uh, the rest of the way. Clayton State did lead by six at one point. So that's been their biggest uh, advantage. Up one here as we go under 10 minutes left in this championship game of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament. Kyle Kinsey back in for the Lakers now. And he's going to let go from way downtown and taken in by Jalen Taylor. Spins on the baseline, got some help, and they're going to call a travel on Jalen Taylor. Yeah, travel there, but I'm not sure how they didn't get a call on Nigel Grant, to be honest with you. 
Andre Grant actually has played a very clean game. He's only got one personal foul. And that, by far and away, he's the best player on the court. Braves basketball, there's that guy, Nigel Grant. Jalen Taylor on him. Kinsey drives, lets it off for Strother for three, and he hits it. Big three by David Strother. His first basket of this game gives the Braves the lead again, 50 to 48. As we approach nine minutes left in the second half. Here's Tuxen with it. Pruitt comes out to greet him. Now McCray, screen from Taylor. Aubrey drives, gives to Powell. Here's Taylor underneath and the swat and the foul by Grant. Talk about facial expressions, Bill. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I know Watts has some good ones, but uh, yeah, Grant's right up there. They, they've never had a call that uh, they thought, it's like, uh, remember, yeah. well, you're a Yankee fan, Paul O'Neill. I don't think Paul O'Neill had a strike called on him his whole career that he didn't <laughs> disagree with. Jalen Taylor misses his first free throw. Taylor on the season, 71% from the line. And uh, Taylor has struggled for a second straight game, although that's his first miss from the free throw line here today. And he gets the roll there, and that uh, ties it at 50. Well, I thought it did. It says 50 to 49 still on the scoreboard, so. One point lead for the Braves. Oh, and the nice steal by Benneman. So he anticipated that pass, stops and shoots at the elbow and comes up short. And then the rebound goes to the Braves. And here's Nigel Grant up and under. Missed, got his own rebound. Missed again. Wow. Whoa. And, that was unexpected. And McCray had to really, he couldn't contest it because of the foul issues. He's got three. Tuxin was wide open in the corner, but Benneman couldn't get it to him. Powell trying to get some space, and no foul called on Strother. Now it's Tuxin. Three ball, McCray in and out. The rebound to Micah Kinsey. And here's a three from Bryant. Off the mark, skying for the rebound, though, was Micah Kinsey. It's a very, no reset. very entertaining game. Both teams are cold, though. Uh, not Strother, back-to-back uh. -back trays for this freshman from Lumberton. Championship game uh, jitters? I don't think so. It's 53-49. This is the biggest lead now the UNCP has had since that 10-point lead in the first half. Yeah, the one thing I really worried about with you, uh, with Pembroke, is getting out there and getting those threes. If they can hit those threes, they're a really tough team to beat. Tuxton passed on one there. Benneman. Down low, it's Taylor, spins on Grant, shoots, no, and the rebound to Pruitt. We're getting down to nitty gritty time here, almost seven minutes left. And almost stolen by the Lakers, and Grant goes up and bodies it in. And the Lakers call timeout, Nigel Grant with 26. He's got eight in the second half, and a six point lead now for UNC Pembroke. It's 55-49. You're watching the Peach Bell Conference Tournament on PeachBellConference.com. Well, final seven minutes of this Peach Bell Conference Tournament championship game, and the Lakers now are up against it. 
facing a six-point deficit as things have kind of turned now in favor of the Braves. Nigel Grant taking over here in the second half. A couple of gigantic threes, though, by David Strother, who hadn't scored in the first half. 55-49, UNC Pembroke. Lakers cold in the second half, just 7-21. Here's Taylor underneath, gets stripped and loses it. Grant was looking like he might get whistled, but he didn't, and he had a big smile on his face. Cheshire grin. Basket here could be deadly right now. Murray Boyles has got it. Turns, backs in on Powell, and then finds the open space and gets the roll. James Murray Boyles, and it's 57-49 UNCP now, and some good defense as they're denying the basketball at every turn. Which Laker is gonna be able to step up and maybe get his team back into this thing? And it's Tuxin who got blocked on the three, but he stepped out of bounds, and Kinsey again. Micah Kinsey has made some great plays at both ends on defense for this team. He's been all over the court and he never quits. Yeah, I mean, they again, this is a team from top to bottom. They've got really, I mean, the guards play well. We talk about the big guys over and over and Pruitt. And, of course, Grant, Watts down low too. I mean, they really have a, a well-rounded roster. I guess is there a clock issue now? Yeah, they're discussing the, another clock issue that right now we've got it at 5.58 on the game clock and 10 seconds on the shot clock. So we'll see uh, what they change here. If anything, they haven't changed anything. Stays the same. Lakers have 10 seconds to shoot. It's Benneman and gets it to Tuxin. And here's McCray for a three and he hits it at the buzzer. How is he not fouled on that either? And there was no whistle there as he went down and hit the ground. Micah Kinsey's got it the other end and deflected and stolen by McCray. 57-52, Lakers down by five. Aubrey McCray. Here's Tuxin. What a shot by McCray on that three at the buzzer. Jacall Owens facing up, drives to the basket and then a whistle and they're gonna call the foul on who? Grant. So for Nigel Grant, he now has three with 5.15 left in the ball game. And now again, we've got one of the officials coming over, Michael Colon, having a discussion with the uh, official at the table who is Peachtree Geis. So Owens to the line on a one and one here, Bill. And uh, Jacarl a 65% free throw shooter on the season and has not been to the line yet in this game. These are gonna be huge. And Owens oh. is able to hit that big one oh, right there. Ice man. Gives him a, an opportunity to get another free throw here. And a top chance for the Lakers to add points with the clock stopped, obviously. Oh, and Jacarl, the redshirt junior from Orlando, knocks down both. Lakers now down three, 57-54. Both teams have been really rubbish from the, the line, too. I mean, they have been in the mid-50s for both sides today from the free throw line. Oh, Brandon Watts with a fadeaway three, like it was nothing. And it's back to six, 60 to 54. Low scoring game for these two teams that average uh, 81 and 82 points per game respectively. Tuxton gonna go stop at the foul line and shoot and make it. So Justin Tuxton with a couple of buckets here in the last minute plus, he's got nine. And the Lakers back down by four as we go under four and a half remaining this championship game of the Peach Bell Conference Tournament. And uh, it's been a doozy so far. Here's Watts, down low to Pruitt, spins on Owens and his bank shot is money. 
Pruitt with 13. 62-56, Braves. Benjamin's got it, up top. Tuxton is able to come clear for the basketball, spins and now stops his dribble, gets it to Owens, left side. Puts it on the floor, foul line jumper. is good, a high archer. Wow, we haven't seen that from J.O. this year. A pull out of the right time, big fella, representing the 407. Braves up four, three and a half remaining. Murray Boyles with it. Now to Watts, they swing it left side, Strother. Murray Boyles facing up on Powell. He's going to fade away and make it again. Big time basketball going on right now. All of these guys want the title. It, boy, it was slow for a while. Now everybody can't miss. Benjamin gives to Tuxent with the dribble. Gets the screen through Powell. I think they got to get Nate Powell down low. And here Owens puts it on the floor. Goes right at Watson. Banks it home. Or that. Jamal, uh, Jacarl Owens from the outside, from the inside. So Jacarl's kind of playing guard. Nate Powell's in the four. I don't know what's going They've on. They've reversed it. I, it's amazing. 64-60. Pembroke on top. Murray Boyles loses it. Benjamin's got it. He's able to get it to Owens. And Jacarl's got to get it to a guard. He does. He gets it to McCray, who gets fouled, and that's it for Brandon Watts on the reach in. Brandon Watts is fouled out. Watts with nine, but he has meant so much more to this team with his play. And a timeout on the court. 227 left in the championship game of the Peach Belt Conference. And it is UNC Pembroke 64, Clayton State 60. I don't know about you, Bill, but I need a breather. We'll take a timeout. You're watching the Peach Bell Conference tournament on peachbellconference.com. All right, we've gathered ourselves. We're ready. I don't know about you. I know these two teams are ready, and I will say this. With a 64-60 advantage right now for UNC Pembroke, whatever happens, one of these teams is uh, going to go home without the championship. But uh, both teams certainly deserving. They've had great seasons. They will continue on in the NCAA Division II playoffs in that tournament. Yeah. I, I look, I think, honestly, these the makeup of these two teams, the current guys on the floor, you could play ten games, it could be five and five. And missing on the front end of that one and one was Arby McCray. Huge miss there. So here's a chance for uh, Pembroke to put a little bit more space between themselves and the Lakers, and they get it down to Pruitt. Spins on Powell, and it rolls in. Wow. Wonderful shot. Threw it with 15, eight of them here in the second half, and it's 66-60 as we close in on two minutes left in this ball game. Two minutes, two minutes. There's Tuxen, wide open if he wanted a three, he didn't go. McCray back to Tuxen. Here's Owens with the screen. Justin gives it to Owens at the elbow, and he's gonna shoot, and it's gonna rim in and out, and then the tap by Benjamin didn't go. Uh, well. And that hurts. And now there's a minute 40 left in this one. And they're going to slow it down. 56.5% shooting in the second half for UNC Pembroke. Strother finds some space, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Strother with just his second. But the Lakers get the basketball back, so they dodge one there. Oh, wait a second. 
Yes. Offensive foul on Strother. And they're over the limit. They have uh, 18 fouls, make it nine now, but uh, the Lakers will inbound it in their own backcourt. As Ben Miller has a discussion right now with one of the officials, but Lakers basketball down six, a minute and a half remaining. Do they have another comeback in them? Ball deflected. Nice play, Mitch right Evans. Right to me with the nice. pen in one hand. Nice, look at that. Mean streets of Brooklyn coming through. <laughs> Tuxton back to Benjamin. Now Tuxton again from downtown, no short, and the rebound, Nigel Grant. A minute and 11 left. The Lakers have to get a stop here if they're going to have any chance. I, I think, honestly, if they don't get a stop of this possession, I don't know if they can win. Kinsey and a whistle, and they're going to call a foul on Aubrey McCray, and that's four on McCray. That miss on the front end of the one and one really hurt because the Lakers had a chance to tack on a couple of points with the clock not running. Yeah. And now a timeout by Miller and the Braves with 59.5 seconds remaining. And UNC Pembroke is that amount of time away from repeating as uh, the conference tournament champions. They lead the Lakers of Clayton State 66-60. Well. 59 and a half seconds left to go and you got 20 on the shot clock here I think if the Lakers can't get a stop I really think I mean look they get if they get a bucket make it an eight-point game I don't know if the Lakers can overcome that and, and under well, you got to come down and, and hit a three yeah. immediately yeah and, and then you just got to have a perfect game I mean the degree of difficulty is pretty high at six points right now yeah. but if there is a basket that goes in and it's eight it's not impossible Let's just put it this way. You want to play around with statistics, it would be really tough. And the Lakers would have to pretty much play perfect basketball and have the confluence of many things. Calls go their way, some plays on Pembroke's side. Uh, you know, this is a team that's, as you mentioned, been here before they've won it. I mean, they don't make too many mistakes. So they got to play good defense. They've got to have these 20 seconds, I would assume. They're probably going to run off at least as 10 as, seconds yeah. before they would take a, lo a look. But you know what? This is a Lakers team, and we've seen this because we've been here for all the home games this year. We have seen some things we didn't think was going to be we, that could be possible. So well, don't count them out yet. You've got Kinsey inbound on the side, and he gets it into Grant. And Kinsey gets it back. He drives to the basket, misses Powell with the rebound. Perfect. And Nate running and loses it. And here is Strother who gives it to the jam to Pruitt, which in all probability wrapped it up. And then the steal again. And that's going to be it. The foul by Nate Powell. And it's a 68-60 lead for UNC Pembroke. And they're going to go to the line. And it's probably all done except for the shouting now. Yeah, everything went well except for that turnover by Nate Powell. And then on the other end, Tez then turned it over again after the slam. And, and those two turnovers just were the kiss of death at this point. And the inbound with 42.4 seconds left. It worked out. The Lakers got the miss. Powell skied for the rebound and started coming up court. And the ball just seemed to fall out of his hands got a yeah. little bit in front of him now Pembroke took the shot way too early they got the miss the Lakers had it and they got it into the hands of the right players and Strother is fouled in the backcourt by Justin Tuxin well, you just got to tip your cap to the Braves I mean this is a team that has played well not only this year but last this will be their 36th win in 42 games I mean, this was one of the teams that beat him in Clayton State. Ooh. But off of Carl Owens. Wow. And it, it just, you know, well, that's. I mean, if that doesn't, if that doesn't, you know, put the exclamation point on well, it as far as what happened here in the last minute. What, three turnovers in about 20 yeah. seconds. I mean, you had the basketball and you gave it up a couple of times. And then the foul there with 36.2 left. Oh, three turnovers in 20 seconds. I mean, that kills you. I'm sorry, is, is they, they would have had, at least if they could have held on to the ball, they could have had those opportunities, but 
Looks like it has gone by the boards, unfortunately. But David still. Strother, I'm going to tell you right now at the foul line as he sinks that one, his two three balls here in the second half yeah. were enormous. They Immense. Were. I agree because it was a it was a stretch where everybody was cold. Yeah, and he hadn't scored at all. Well, he has scored. He's got eight points here in the second half, and uh, wrapped it up as it's a ten-point lead now. Tuxton from three, that's off the line. The back tap, McCray from downtown, can't get it to go. Fight for it. The ball going to go, be saved. Stepped out of bounds there by Tyrell Kirk, so it stays with the Lakers. 23.1 remaining, but a 10-point deficit for Clayton State. McCraig from downtown again can't get it to fall, and the rebound there by Strother, and that's going to be it. The UNC Pembroke Braves are going to repeat as the conference tournament champions in the Peach Belt as they will run out the clock. The Lakers will not defend, and that'll do it. Your final buzzer. And on the road, UNC Pembroke is a 70-60 winner over the Clayton State Lakers to win their second straight Peach Belt Conference Tournament championship game. Well, congrats to them. This is a team that has earned it. I mean, they, they have uh, certainly went through a tough game. I mean, they had a, a lot of players with foul trouble. They had Brandon Watts foul out. He had an exceptional game by Nigel Grant, who at this point, I think everybody needs to maybe recount all of their Peach Belt Conference Player of the Year ballots because Grant had, played, had an exceptional, not only tournament, exceptional uh, games against Clayton State, but an exceptional year. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. I know, I mean, look, this stinks at home for the Lakers, and they haven't lost in 14 games. But yeah, the 14 game winning streak comes yeah, to an end uh, against the team that, you know, that really kind of got it going for the yeah. Lakers. But, you know, look, they're going to go into the NCAA Division II tournament. Yes, there's no question about and, that. And, and, and they've got to turn the page, compartmentalize it, and move on. And for Pembroke, this is a great thing for them. They can go in now, their head's high. They did this on the road. They they, they sort of avenged their loss, uh, losing here oh. earlier in the season. And you know what? Is It's one of those things where... Um, I think for, from a Pem, from a Pembroke perspective, they could say, hey, I know we got tied at the end of the regular season, and technically Clayton State won it. They did. They won the regular season. So that's why we're here today. But they won, they feel, the game that counted. And, I mean, they've got the title. So congrats to them. It was a heck of a game. Well, this is tough, certainly, for uh, the Lakers to watch right now as they're all sitting on their bench just pretty much staring straight into space as they watch... UNC Pembroke celebrate on their court. They're going to cut down the nets here. And uh, I tell you what, Bill, this is something that this team, uh, I know, will get past. Because, again, as you pointed out, they're going to go to the NCAA Division II tournament. Yeah. And, and so they'll get their chance to make them forget this feeling right now. But it's something for them to remember for next year i think it's well i think it's also a brilliant point to something to remember for the tournament you know sometimes when you have a long win streak like that i know at a time you, it feels like you are not ever going to lose right you feel indestructible and then when you lose boy it hurts it rips your heart out but the thing is is sometimes especially when you're going into a big tournament i know it sounds crazy maybe it's a good thing to lose all right, we've got uh, the uh, conference all-tournament team, so we'll listen to this. So there's Akia Pruitt, defensive player of the year. Dante's Benham. Dante's Benham a name to the all tournament team for the Lakers. And for Clay State, Nathan Powell. And Napal as well recognized for his contributions in this tournament. 
So you got Akia Pruitt, Nate Powell, Dantez Benham in there, and I'm sure the Nigel Grant is going to be the MVP. Uh, and there it is, as expected. Kind of a no-brainer on that one. If it wasn't, I want to know who it is. Nigel Grant had 26 points. i tell you what, he got off to a quick start in the second half, too. And, and then his teammates took over from there. Yeah, Kia Pruitt, 17 with seven rebounds is huge. Now the Clayton State Lakers and head coach Jimmy Link will receive the runner-up trophy. And I'm sure Coach Link, very proud of his team and what they've accomplished thus far this season. And there's, there's still more to come, as you said, Bill. They'll be, they'll be in the uh, NCAA Division II tournament, as will, obviously, the conference champion, UNC Pembroke Braves. And we'll see if anyone else gets in there, if USC Aiken, if uh, Francis Marion might get in there. And there's Ben Miller with uh, Brandon Watts. And a key, uh, excuse me, uh, you've got uh, Nigel Grant there as well. So he's got his seniors with him. And now the Lakers will depart after a tough loss. It's been a great season. It's not over for Clayton State. As they will continue on, but there are the victorious UNC Pembroke Braves now, having won this championship game over Clayton State by the score of 70 to 60. 23 wins for the Lakers this year. It's only their third home loss. There's yep. so much they can be proud of. There's so much that um, they went through adversity-wise in the middle of the year, and they overcame. And, I, I mean, it, it, it is one of those that's sad, but uh, this is a team that is, I think, going to, go into the tournament and probably be better off in some ways I, I, I hope I hope well there's that, some added pressure to, to yeah. a winning streak like that I mean you know yeah. and we could look back at a few of these games that were played that were where close. they could have lost or were close yeah you know sometimes you say you're better off in that situation they weren't because they were vying for the regular season conference title and then you get into the conference tournament you don't want to lose so I tell you this though I think now a little bit of pressure off their backs. It certainly would have been a feather in their cap to win a 15 straight game and be the conference tournament champions and the regular season champions. But nonetheless, this does not take away from anything that the Clayton State Lakers had going on yeah. this year. You want to know another positive? So they cut down the nets. That net over there has always been a problem this year. <laughs> 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 so, you know what? Happy to see it go. Well, we won't be using it any longer this year, but no, it, it no, does go. Actually, the, I mean, really, there's a story behind that. Um, Lance Agnitz, one of the assistant coaches, I swear, I don't know what it was, it four or five home games, Mitch? They had to get the ladder out before the home game. Yes, that to, net, to fix that yeah, net. That, yeah, that that's net right, always. That's what Lance uh, uh, doing it, right? right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying is, you know, goodbye. The, there you go, the positive Right. Goodbye to Lance that. Lance Egnots was was a uh, he actually he he laid down his tool here before the start of the game a couple of games ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was uh, that net has uh, been coming loose <laughs> through the course of the year. As UNC uh, Pembroke continues to uh, get their just desserts for winning the conference championship here in the tournament, and. Uh, Hey, look, they deserve it. Oh, uh, there, there is nothing in this game, I think, that you say uh, that you can have sour grapes if you're Clayton State. There, there is nothing that um, they, I mean, if they just would have played a little bit better, they could have they could have had an opportunity to win. Yeah. The, the final three turnovers in the last 20, uh, the 20 seconds, uh, that, that killed them. That was, that was a killer. But, you know, they were already behind. And it's, look. This is a Pembroke team that they had to play close to perfect against, and they didn't play close to perfect. In fact, in both teams, I'm surprised. You look at the final stats, boy, they both shot poorly from the field um, in, in a lot of regard. I mean, the, the Lakers were 34%, 22 of 64. But both teams, really where they shot poorly, I'm shocked at. Both teams went to the free throw stripe with the amount of fouls that were called in this game. There were a lot of fouls called in this game on both sides. They both shot just 
horribly. 15 of 26 for the Braves, yep. 57% percent, and 10 of 18 for the Lakers, 55%. Yeah, the Lakers these last three, four games did not shoot well at the foul line, and uh, they, were, they came up basically empty in the second half from downtown. They were just one of 10 after being 5 of 11 in the first half, so they didn't have that aspect of the game going for them. And, uh, again, uh, 40. On this day, yeah. the better team won for sure in UNC Pembroke. 46 fouls total. 24 for the Lakers, 22 for UNC Pembroke. Uh, also, you know, I think it's interesting. Just I, This fascinates me sometimes because we talked about the height disparity. I mean, it's big-time height disparity. Lakers actually out-rebounded yeah, Pembroke, that 43 was never to 39. Yeah, that wasn't a factor. I mean, you know, it wasn't. No, I mean, it we, wasn't. And we pretty much knew. It's a neat stat, but it wasn't. Hey, how about uh, points off turnovers? That was a big difference yeah. in this game, 23 to 7, because uh, Clayton State turned it over 18 times. UNC Pembroke only, you know, 17. So there was no real disparity there, but the disparity was in what they were able to do with the turnovers. Well, I'll tell you what. They, that, that is actually the most turnovers of the three matchups um, in the win they had only 15 turnovers, but in the loss, Mitch, in, on January 20th, they had 16 turnovers. Uh, that was the Cousins eight turnover game. Yeah, right. And and they have 18 here today. So the actually the turnover num the turnover number went up. And the, you know what? When we talked about the 15, 16, they go to 18. Those are the three turnovers there at the end. Well, there you go. That about does it. As uh, they will now cut down the nets, their last uh, chore, if you will, for the champions. The UNC Pembroke Braves, who have won this uh, Peach Bell Conference Tournament Championship game by the score of 70-60 to 60 over Clayton State. Any uh, parting thoughts? Well, it's been a pleasure all year, partner. I mean, yep. uh, the one thing I'm sad about is we don't have any more basketball games to call together until yep. next year. So, yep. I mean, that's not as fun for me. Oh, come on, I'm disappointed in that. I'm yeah, just well, that. I, I wanted some win, more basketball games. Well, win or lose, we, we were well, going to be done. But, we again, I at know the very that, least, we're going to get to watch these guys play yeah. uh, in the NCAA Division II tournament. Uh, we won't be calling those games, but uh, we will be able to keep an eye on them. And uh, you could do that via PeachBellConference.com. You can stream that just as you stream these games as well. So there's still that there for you. And uh, as... The uh, Braves continue to celebrate. Uh, we'll wrap things up. And uh, I want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in over the course of this season for all our Clayton State Lakers basketball fans. And then over the course of the last several days for all of you folks uh, watching here on PeachBellConference.com, no matter what school that may have been here in uh, the best conference in Division II basketball around uh, uh, the country, certainly here in the Southeast. So we appreciate that from everyone. And uh, that will do it for us. And I want to say thank you again for watching the Peach Bell Conference Tournament for my partner Bill Schindler as well as Terrence Lomax all season long. Yeoman's work out there. We couldn't have done it without you, Terrence, uh, with broadcast operations and the rest of us uh, from Clayton State University. I'm Mitch Evans signing off. Once again, your final score, UNC Pembroke 70, Clayton State 60. Congratulations to the Braves on their second straight Peach Belt Conference Tournament Championship. Take care, everybody.